Welcome to the to the next interview. Uh, we're blessed to have these two ladies who have agreed to um, take part this evening in an amazing gem in the middle of, of Bally Home. Bally Home. Tell us about this wee spot. So this is JJ McLaughlin um, Bar in the back of Beyond, and it was put together just as a wee hub before lockdown and it was put to very good use over lockdown and this is where we like to sit and scheme the next swim, the next plan, the next adventure, <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah, it's a cool wee place to bring people to. So welcome Dee Newell Thank Thank and you. Grace McLaughlin. Thank you. Oh. No plan B. There is no plan B. There is no plan B. There was never a plan B. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for your time um, and agreeing to this mm -hmm. because I'm not sure both of you is what your feelings are after last season. And I think it's even more important for people to get uh, different perspectives yeah. of any swim. Regardless if it's the North Challenge, English Challenge, or any other mammoth adventure, and uh, I'm so grateful for you to agree to this because, uh, yeah, you can, I'm not sure how deep it goes in terms of uh, your last season, but that's what we're going to talk about and bring it home to people uh, that's taken on a adventure, be it the North Challenge, English Challenge, whatever it may be one K swim for the first time in their lives in open water. Um, nothing's rehearsed here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we should have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a hell of a lot easier with drink. Whiskey in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, 2023 mm -hmm. was a tough season for you both. Yeah. Um, let me start off with who wants to go first in terms of the lead up or the, the, the Chris, Chris you go first, okay. so the lead, just tell us about the lead up to your swim and making the decision and, and, and sort of how I made the decision yeah. um, okay so the first how I made the decision to do the North Channel was um, really the stepping stones that have been put in place through um, Irish swimming and um, the Long Distance Association and um, I started by doing fast net because it was a swim that I'd seen and I just thought my goodness me how iconic is that to be able to go down and do fast net that would be a beautiful swim to do um, and I prepared myself for that in the pool on my uh, Todd on my own and worked away and it was exciting went down did the swim it was like a different world. It was heaven on earth. And I just thought, right, I have actually found something that doesn't exist anywhere else and I need to just get into this. So did Fastnet, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thought it was one of the most amazing things I'd ever achieved in my life, which was lovely. And um, came away from that buzzing. Kept the training going, which was great because um, I then had fallen completely head over heels in love with it and then decided that summer as well to do Galway Bay um, because it was also another step that was set clearly out in front of you. So got that booked and went and did Galway Bay and exactly the same thing. The most beautiful part of the country, um, took you away for the weekend, went down with a good friend, she crewed for me and it was a dream. 
the staff and the boat and everything was just fantastic. So after that, I thought, oh my goodness, this is a very addictive sport. Um, would I dare to try the North Channel? Would I dare? And of course, chatted about it in here, many's an evening with friends who all swim. And then the next thing was, I'd signed up for the North Channel, spoke to yourself. And uh, yeah, that was the next big challenge was to try and do that. Um, very exciting, it's right on the doorstep. You look at it, you swim around it, you walk around it, you see people coming from all around the world, taking part in it. You go down to the dunkers and you're swimming alongside people from all arts and parts who come along to both fear and also challenge themselves in the swim. So um, I got on board and was like a complete roller coaster, trained and trained like nobody's business. Went through the pain and the joy of the ice swimming and thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, kept that in the back of my head and then along came D. <laughs> <laughs> so D, yeah. take us up as far as your North Channel. So, uh, well, yeah, because yeah, it's funny because we met at Grace's Ice Mountain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. yeah, it was very different for me because I kind of heard about the English Channel in about 2013, I think, and I sort of dismissed the English Channel and was like, well, if I was going to do one, I would do this one that's in Ireland. And then the more I learned about it, I was like, oh, God, the North Channel seems to be really like out there and not many people have done it. And, you know, the English Channel seemed to be an easier route. And yeah, so even before all of that, I didn't even think of a channel. I thought the Galway Bay swim, I'd done that in 2012. So I was like, if I went back and did that in Skins, that would be like a big deal. Um, and I sort of, yeah, fell into loads of other things. So I went into a bit of ice swimming, but life kind of very much changed drastically for me in 2021, I think it was, 2022. I'd been overseas and stuff and I just come back. And when I got onto you, Jacqueline, I had like loads of shit going on and I was like, I think I need to just do the North Channel because all I could do at that time was swim. And I was thinking for this year, but you had a slot for last year or no it was meant to be a rolling slot and then it was like the slot came up so that's how I got onto the North Channel but I wasn't like in one sense I was like Jesus I, I don't have enough time to get ready for that but in another sense when I did the English Channel I had just come back from being overseas in Syria in 2018 and I came back that November and I swam that July so it's kind of the same sort of lead up and I knew what needed to be done just that it needed to be done in colder water than what I had done because when I was getting ready for the English Channel I was going to Aberstock and I was going places where the water was a little bit warmer um, mm. than what we had in Ireland so then I did the same thing I did the same thing last year I was like okay I think I just need to move up to where the North Channel is so I, yeah I put that out there <laughs> like that's crazy but and, you know people thought I was crazy but it was when I was chatting to Dean Conroy and he was like that's exactly what you need to do and I know who to put you in touch with and he was like and if you want to come up next Saturday um, I'll get you swimming with someone she's doing a nice mile yeah. it's under the radar but you know you might swim nicely with her and then that's that's how I met Grace and how and the friendship has uh, evolved yeah, yeah. The friendship has evolved yeah. which has been so good it's mm -hmm. been the best yeah and then you ever. had racing you had some uh, channels behind you so you had your English channel and then you also had been in South Africa yeah and yeah. it had been a, a lot of swim quest. Yeah. Uh, and D from the Sea, Bikini, Bikini D yeah. had uh, already <laughs> established herself in the ice bikini, swimming world. <laughs> For the North Channel of the jellyfish. <laughs> no, look after no. you. <laughs> so, yes, the season opens with uh, Hit the Wall. And, yeah. Uh, you have been training all winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you come to cold, colder water and uh, mm -hmm. longer distance in the cold. Yeah, longer distance in the cold for me was um, exciting um, because I quite enjoyed the cold. Um, but I also found it very hard to navigate training sessions in the cold around this part of the world. Um, there is really maybe one or two people, and that's Dee and I, that would swim that bit longer. While I have a great crew of friends 
um, they would have done relays. They would have got in with me for an hour and then I would have maybe swam on my own for an hour and then maybe somebody else would come along and pop up beside me and swim. Or there was days where I just had to figure it out, tie your drink to the buoy and just swim, get your head down and, and do the work in the water, um, which was great. Doing it on your own is tough. And it's nice to have company every so often yeah. to be able to do that and time yourself. Um, and it was great because uh, the old Garmin gave in and it wouldn't work. And That's I think I must hours. have tried three or four different Garmins. None of them worked. So in the end, it was just like, son, it's gone. <laughs> right, get out. <laughs> you, had to, yeah. you had to just go long and there was no point in going, oh, that's another 20 minutes or that's another half hour. It was just, right, mm -hmm. just go. Um, but I enjoyed that. I yeah. enjoyed those. Mm. Oh my God, it was. Remember, it was a really sunny day. Yeah. The first time we went out, and I think we got in the water, and it was like sixteen degrees. And by the time we got to Donaghy, it wasn't it about twelve. Yeah, it just really dropped it the was temperature, freezing. That's why we said we needed to do it the other way when we were doing that one again, like for that route, because at least you're swimming into the warmth. But I don't think it made any didn't, difference. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. It was obviously either. just that day that it was like. But we, yeah, we were really cold the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of your training. <clears throat> the, the uh, like what was your average weekly count in terms of time or distance? You see, I <clears throat> I'm in a different job now. So when I was in, so I I always be referring back to the English Channel because everything just worked for me when I did that. I used to swim every morning either in the pool or in the sea, and then I would do my big blocks at the weekend. So I would do big back to back swims wherever there was clean water because Dublin didn't have clean water in 2019. And still doesn't but um it was really bad in 2019 whereas this year so the way i work now i'm on 24 hour shifts when i'm in work so i'll work a saturday sunday i'll come out the monday morning and i'm back in thursday friday out the saturday morning and then i'm in the monday tuesday wednesday out the, and then i go on standby for a week so i'm trying to fit things in around that so my mileage some weeks was hardly anything and then other weeks i was trying to load all the mileage in and it just doesn't work you know and that's something that I'm still in the same job this year but I don't know how I'm going to make it work because it doesn't work it didn't work and like you know I came out of work this morning and yeah it's not because of anything work related but I'm not informed to swim today do you know and it's just it's just the way it is but like the two of us kind of ballpark I suppose at about 20k as our that's the kind of limit you need or that's what you, your minimum that you need to be doing um, and that's something that I'm even not fully, I'm not fully solid on how or what I'm going to do because I'm, you know, we're always, we're always thinking. <laughs> she was really like, we're always just thinking about swimming. That's it. It's all that exists. And swimming. Like, yeah, like I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how can I get out and go for a swim when I'm meant to be doing other things, you know, but. I was like, if, if I could get myself to the place where on my standby week that I'm doing about 40k and then if I'm doing 12k on the other two weeks, will that balance out? But yeah. it's just, yeah, it's it's trying to figure that out. Really, I think I just need to retire, but I can't say that out loud in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And that was good for you to take time and realise <clears throat> the, the differences between the two weeks because we talked a little yeah. bit about, but I need to fit it in. And I was like, no, it has to actually fit your work and it has mm. to... The, the work life flow as opposed yeah. to being and I find I find it really hard to train in work I just don't like the gym in work it's not easy to train in um, it doesn't have all the things that I need but I do have um, you know the cables that everyone would have used during lockdown so I think like lockdown is great for when you're limited on training that mm -hmm. all the little inventions that came out so I I do use those cables but I don't use them half as much as I should so it's just a matter of you know getting back into doing all of that but even a small thing like up here in the Aurora, we're not allowed to use like fins or um, hand paddles or any equipment. Um, and like, you know, during the week I was in the knack and just the difference of wearing the finger paddles. Finger right. paddles I would like, be amazing if you could, but unfortunately you've yeah. got to just work with what you can work with. Exactly, yeah. 
and it's just yeah and, and the thing is I'm so long not using any equipment you know because I'm, I've mostly been training up here when I'm in the pool yeah that you forget how good it is because mm. I like you know you do simple like do 50 meters with your finger paddles and then do a swim do 50 meters afterwards and you're like oh I'm actually swimming properly yeah. mm. <laughs> Grace you talked about your Garmin giving up yeah uh, and you're a you do some coaching you're a teacher yeah how much data is too much data I am definitely not a person who likes to watch Dal. I just am not that person at all. <laughs> when it comes opposite. to, yeah, I am totally opposite today. So if you start, there's got to be a finish, and that's just it, no matter what it is. Yeah. And it just <clears throat> has to work that way. Um, and it's it just, that's the way it is. The data for me, I suppose, I was concerned in knowing how much time I had to spend in the cold water and my body tolerating that North Channel cold water and that chill that you're meant to be able to tolerate both mentally and physically was one of my major fears with swimming the North Channel um, and I just wanted to be completely bulletproof when it came to that. So I put it out of my head that it was a 20 minute swim. I never measured the temperatures of the water. I don't even still like to talk about the temperatures of the water. Um, I don't think it helps the environment or your mental approach to things. It's just cold. Get in. <laughs> That's it. You know, you've been medically looked at. You're grand. So if you're ticking right, just get on with it. Um, so no, data for me. Um, when it comes to that, doesn't apply. However, when it comes to the pool and it comes to your skills and your drills and the builds that you need to have for each wee muscle, I have to say I like to be quite anal about those things. And when it comes to distance and time in the pool, it's really, really important that that is done. I think I made a huge mistake last year in my training when it came to the approach for the North Channel because again I knew the chink in the armour was the the temperature thing for me. I also was very lucky and I had Dominic Mudge as a training partner for a lot of my training last year um, and he unfortunately worked a hell of a lot so his time in open water was really cut compared to mine. I would work a week on and then a week off and it's a broken week so I just cycled my training around what I was doing and some days I would go long in the pool and he would stay in and then I would go to the sea but he couldn't because he had to go to work and I would have suffered so badly in the sea and then Dom would have racked up at the weekend and would go in for a sea swim and I'd come out shaking and going oh my god how am I going to cope with this and he'd be out and he'd be like are you cold? and I'm cold. What? So that was always haunting me the whole year last year so I stopped pool training in May and didn't go back to the pool didn't once go back to the pool didn't visit the pool at all and I think that was mistake number one mm -hmm. um, for me um, there was a lot of mistakes but that was definitely something that I wouldn't advise anybody to do is keep that pool swimming going keep that open water swimming going both have to marry together you've got to find whether you're doing big time in the sea you've got also got to do maybe you know not just as much but you've got to attend those pool sessions as well they're really it's really the important quality training. Mm -hmm. yeah the quality training. yeah the quality training is exceptionally mm -hmm. important you know yeah and i feel that the open water the open water part of the training yeah is, is for your tolerance of the cold but also for your mental mm. building up your mental confidence you know that you can take this on but not only that here's the other thing that was a bit of a light switch moment as well was and I'll, I'll not mention any names but we were in we would have done a lot of swims at Brompton because the swimming at Brompton was good because it's a towpath so people could have walked along the towpath and said right a singer 20 past 10 yeah. and then somebody else would have walked and gone yeah it's just it's still in the water it's 12 o'clock or whatever and then somebody would have just texted back and then they would have been down for you getting out you would have known there would have been eyes on you which was mm. great but with my training as well I stupidly on really bad windy wavy days I would have gone to what you do is an open water you look at the you look at the weather you look at the way the winds are going and you go all right don't get to today 
Port of today? Grimsport today? No. Windy days, no matter what it's thrown at you, you need to still be in the same pond, taking it on the face, being hit because the waves hitting your shoulders and hitting your arms and hitting your hands and hitting your head is a completely different world yet again. Just swimming up and down with the wind at your back or the wind at side and you being able to swim with a bit of a chop but being abused and hit and murdered in the water for an hour is probably a really good training session and I only really discovered that as well towards the end of the summer and thought oh my god this because you came out and you felt really sore after battling that for so long yeah and that that also was not but Another I, note. I, yeah, but I wouldn't go overboard either because I found like I first started training like that, you know, because in Galway you really would only train along the prom in Galway and you go in in whatever conditions. But mm. the first time, or this, when I was training for the Galway Bay Swim in Skins, I think it was, or it might have been even the first time in a wetsuit, um, I just didn't know what I was doing and I was just doing what everyone else was doing. But yeah. the thing is, like, that's exactly what you do. You yeah. just copy what other people are doing. I remember there was a day we were meant to do a 6K swim and we didn't do it because it was absolutely wild. Like, I remember nearly landing up on the kiosk, half, mm. you know, the kilometre distance, you know, or the 500 metres away from the tower. But the thing is, it's to it's to evaluate those swims that you're better doing an hour in the rough. You know, you might have planned two or three hours, do the hour in the rough, and it's actually the value of the rougher swim, you know. So it's not like shy away from the rougher swims, but don't try and do too much in them because yeah. you're only opening yourself up to injury then, yeah. you know, because, like, that is when you get injured, when you get thrown over by a wave or something, and yeah. then that's your swim gone. So it's it, and it, that's a really hard thing to strike the balance of. Because it is, yeah. If you're only swimming in, because that really got in my head when I was doing the English Channel, I was doing loads of swimming in lockdown because... The water quality just wasn't there in Dublin. It was like there was spills nearly every weekend, and I was relying on weekends to do my longer swims. But I wasn't going to put myself into bad water and then have tummy bugs and problems. So I was like, God, I'm training in a lake for a sea swim. But you know, you, you do what you can. Um, you're, you're getting the distance yeah, in. Yeah, the distance yeah. and the temperature, really, I suppose. Mm. And the thing is, like, at the end of the day, you know, I know. The channel can turn every which way, but you're never planning to swim in a gale force yep. swim. You know, you're always looking for the best conditions on the tide. So, gotta be optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> so, for both of you, is living basically at the foot. Yeah. Of uh, the North Channel. Yeah. Do you feel it is an advantage, but a disadvantage, all in the one egg? Yeah, I've been thinking about this now because. I'm like I've I moved up here around May of last year and I'm actually thinking this year I'd be able to do <laughs> what? That's the glamour, that's an advantage. That's an advantage it is. Because <laughs> of that's a grace. That's a just you know the answer to that. Holy gosh. <laughs> March and April though in Dublin the water will be warmer <laughs> and in Galway it'll be warmer. So we need to move to Galway or Dublin <laughs> for March and April. Build a van, where you going? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I think these Total. thoughts, and now I've said these thoughts live <laughs> in front of people, and I'm like, am I just chasing water temperatures around Ireland? I know, I know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I think it's an advantage. I think it's a definite no, it's advantage. It's an unreal advantage, because the thing is, what I love about it here, like, because you have all the swim spots in Dublin, but you're sitting in traffic for an hour to get to any of them, and... Like here, everything is everything can be walking distance here, mm -hmm. and it's like you said, if it's doing something at this location, then you go to that location. You don't mm -hmm. need tide. We've um, got a peninsula. It's I mean, perfect, it's, it's amazing. Right? You can go to one side or the other side, and yeah. both give you completely different experiences, which is fantastic. And it's so much a mental game. This, yeah. oh my goodness! So to be able to see it and know it and look at it and bloody clear day see those feckers in Scotland waving at you <laughs> it's, it's it does help enormously but it's one it's last like thing everything. as well you know like when you turn up anywhere for a swim part of the nerves is that you're in a new place you're out of sync you're out of routine whereas you actually can feel comfortable because you're home it's the old saying it's just better the devil you know than the devil you don't know and if you know the devil well then you know you're, you're going to be a lot yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can manage it, exactly. <laughs> uh, both of you have made peace with it. 
No. So, D. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this. <laughs> when, when you're out there, so the swim day, uh, and the wheels are starting to fall off the wagon. Give us some examples of now what you realise. Yeah, I didn't realise the wheels were coming off because I actually, like, I was really nervous. But see, there was a day we were going doing a six-hour swim, and I was more nervous getting on the boat that morning than I was going down to the marina the morning of the swim. And then when I was doing the swim, I was like, no, I'm actually loving this. And I knew I was flying along and making good progress. Um, but, yeah, like, I think I never I, I never normally feel hungry. At 10 hours, I felt hungry. Um, I know there was at one point, I was just like, well, how far off am I? And I was told 9K. And I just, that that is definitely, there was something just broke. And that's when it really came off. But, like, I think afterwards I wasn't even 9k you know that was like not mm -hmm. that wasn't and, and that's why it's so important not to tell the swimmer in the distance because once I heard 9k I was like that's three hours I don't have three hours swimming left in me because I think at that stage I was 12 and a half um but yeah I hadn't peed from four hours I knew that was a problem but I didn't want to go making an issue of it because the minute you stop and you're not swimming you're getting pushed back and I'm always very conscious of that but it is like, you know, awful. and the thing is, if, if I was on the boat, you know, I'd be saying, just stop, you know, your logic yeah. person, non, your non-swimmer person will be like, no, just, just stop and pee, and if you get moved back 20 metres, so what, you'll make it back up and just, you know, just get back into it. But yeah, like, I remember swimming and feeling hungry and thinking, God, I don't have any actual solid food on there, and I was like, have those peaches that were there as an emergency, so I'm shouting and asking for the peaches, so... I'm here trying to manage the wheels haven't come off, but mm. I was so arrogant in the lead up to it. Like Claire and Andrea tried to get all the what ifs out of me, and I was like, "But that won't happen. That never happens." I know. You know, and I said, "But that that I was like that doesn't happen to me. I'm not that person." Yeah. <laughs> and then I was, you know. Yeah. Um. But the thing as well, like for my feeds, I had kind of gone with, you know. I'd gone for different feeds than what I did on the English Channel, but what I had was what I had used for all my, you know, for everything. And I remember my friend Gav, who crewed me on the English Channel, he said to me afterwards, but he's an ultra runner, and like ultra runners are all pushing the grams of carbohydrates you can have at the minute, and they're all, quite, you know, saying you can get 90 in, in an hour and you can use 90. So Gav said to me, and how many grams of carbs did you have an hour? And I was like, I've studied nutrition, I've done science, and I have like helped loads of people with nutrition and all the rest of it. And I blankly looked at him like, I don't know, I was using UCAN, which is like not really a lot of carbs at all. And, you know, it's designed to be used on its own as a slow release um, carbohydrate or a slow release starch. And that's what you fuel off. Whereas when I did it with the English Channel, I was mixing it with Maxim every second feed. So I was getting sugar. So now I'm thinking back and I'm like, did I actually really feed every two hours on the English Channel with just the Maxim? And is that what fueled me? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's interesting the the learning points from it, mm. but I know that's not obviously what I need, and I need to be pushing carbohydrates. But also, it's like I had nothing; I had no reserves. Like I was like, you know, you try and put weight on, and I know someone could look at you and say, "Oh, you're not very skinny." But like by way of a channel swimmer, I'm very very skinny, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, and like you are as well, Grace, you know, and we've talked about that. Grace is all like, I'm the Grace is like, oh, but I put on a bit of weight. I'm not skinny. I'm like, we're skinny bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we are very skinny. <laughs> you know we are. I know. I know. I, mine was different. I don't, I, I never once wanted to know what distance had gone. I never once did I know what time it was gone. I, in my head, had a plan of how many feeds I would need to take to get there. So I was counting down how many feeds I had. And then I just don't remember one thing at all. It just came to a very abrupt end where mm -hmm. I obviously must have just completely slipped and that was it. I don't remember here. I remember people shouting at me and thinking, God, those earplugs are good and thinking this water's lovely and I remember the crew telling me that I just kept ducking the head down in the water and looking down and then it looked as if I was getting ready to swim but I was just looking in the water and just very strange and then I remember I don't remember saying whenever then um, 
my teammate Jane was in the water with me and she'd done a swim. She uh, accompanied me on part of the swim. And I do remember getting back in and she was swimming and I stopped and went, how on earth are you back in so early? You can't be back in now. And obviously two hours or an hour had passed. passed. I didn't even, mm -hmm. I thought it was five minutes. So I just completely went mm -hmm. cuckoo. Was that, where do you think that came from? You, in terms of, it was the temperature getting into you or was it? I think it was a combination. I think it was the feeding. Mine was definitely the feeding. So um, explain your feeding. So my feeding briefly. was, I had um, fluids. I took it as a fluid drink and I made it up the night before and I made it up with. What um, was in it though? It was um, a carbohydrate and I'd made it up into big bottles. Okay. And there was no warm feed. Okay. So, and I also had tea as a warm feed because I've been taking a cup of tea on my um, training runs. And then I think I was getting cold. I think I do, John said, yeah, you did say you were getting cold. So he heated up. He thought putting hot cold water or warm water into the feeds. Yes. And then that probably diluted the feeds even more. <clears throat> but then I discover you're meant to make those feeds. <laughs> Concentrate. Concentrated. Concentrated. Which I did not do. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. was your feeds, what was your time period between your feeds? Every 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. What, what was your time? Every hour. Every hour. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage every hour? Or, or I'm not questioning. No, it's a disadvantage. Know. And the thing is, like I had all, when I trained for the English Channel, I trained every 30 minutes for feeds. And then when I got over, I was waiting three weeks to swim. So I was doing loads of swimming while I was over there. And Cliff had just said to me, he'd had whatever experience with someone on a boat. And he said, you know, how do you feel about do, trying an hour? So when I was over for the three weeks waiting, I was just feeding on the hour. And um, that worked because the water was warmer over there. And I had been feeding every half hour, kind of more for warmth and sort of just a bit of comfort when I was training. Um, but like, I'm not Andy Donaldson when I go in for a feed. So, and I don't like talking to people when I'm on a feed. I'm really social and I love talking, but when I'm swimming, I just want to put my head down and swim. Yeah. I'm thinking of all the crack and I'm thinking of what everyone's doing on the boat. Um, and I'd say my crew probably, like you were on the boat, you probably think I'm ignorant when I'm swimming because I don't even want to, I don't want to engage because I'm just thinking, my very first feed when I was on the English Channel, I just remember getting pushed back and the same thing happened on my first feed on the North Channel and I was like, you just you can't hang around on them mm -hmm. um so yeah so doing it every hour i felt like that was and the time passed like it it, it just makes and it, it it keeps your head right you know that you're like okay i'm counting 10 feeds i know i've done 10 hours but like see when i was on the north channel if he turned around to me and i know i've said this if he turned around to me and said feed every two or three hours i'd have been like okay grant because the hours the time was just flying flying, flying, flying right, yeah. so fast like i can't get over how quick the time was moving but Every, it's, it's the same as Grace, everything is distorted. Um, mm -hmm. And even that thing about putting your face in the water. So the sun, we swam on a Thursday, and then on the Sunday, like I was in an absolute heat, but we went down and we met at Groom Sport and just mm -hmm. to get in for a little dip. And um, I remember getting into the water and nearly getting a panic attack because I just felt the pressure on my lungs and it just didn't feel good. But at the same time, I felt most at ease with my face in the water. And I think it's just because you've spent that amount of time with your face in the it's water. It's your place. It's your place. <laughs> it really is, so it's funny. We could well have gotten across the channel if that current at the end wasn't quite so strong, if that squall didn't come in. You know, different bits and pieces you can say, if we'd gone a half an hour earlier, there's loads of things that we can say, what if, what if, what if. And the thing is, we could have gotten there, yeah. and the two of us would be sitting here, and I'd be saying, no, no, you feed every hour. Yeah. That's, that's the way it is. And I'd be <laughs> convincing people, why would you feed any less than an hour? Mm. And that's wrong, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, like, people who have been successful, like, everyone, you know, people say about channel swimming, it's 20% physical, 80% mental. But I think I've probably gone to thinking that it's actually 50% luck, and then you break down. <laughs> yeah, and it is. You know, yeah. it really it's is. Yeah. And the thing is, the people who get all of the 50% luck, because they've had... 
But yeah, feckers, but because they've had that good experience and with the best intention in the world, they can be like, no, that's the way. Because like, I know you got a bit of advice along the way and that's where you stopped doing the pool. Yeah. That worked for someone else yeah. and it was the absolute worst thing for you, you know? Yeah, well, it was one of the worst. Yeah. But that, that's such a combination. You can't say that there's one or another. You can't. And then you've got the elements in the day and yeah. what that brings as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a tough sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is what is so addictive and magical and keeps bringing you back yeah. to wanting to do it because you... Yeah. But it's great as well. Like, I mean, um, there's the when you look at the people who have... It's taken a few runs. Mm -hmm. Like, even we met Dina and I didn't realise it took her two goals to get across. Otello, we, we all know, like, three times, wasn't it, before he got across? So, yeah. Yeah. and, like, I think that's the beauty of Hit the Wall as well, that you get to sit down and have a big long table dinner with these people, mm. whereas people can be on a pedestal and they've done this, that and the other, but actually, like, you know, you, you often only hear the good stuff, you don't hear about mm -hmm. all the things mm -hmm. it took to get there. Um, and, it's it, you know, I think the fact that we didn't get across this year we're thinking deeper and we have been from the start because exactly. you know the people who get across I don't know if they're on the phone to you like the next day saying what about this what about that you know yeah. Yeah, they do still ask questions because <laughs> yeah. obviously they're going yeah. further and um, yeah uh, Grace you talked about um or you both of you obviously talking about the experiences and, and what you're learning mm. um you've both been crew you have north channel medals in your little bathroom on your wall you've been on the north channel <laughs> yeah uh, and you came back with us as an observer and as a crew member, and do you have been uh, in different um, roles as well? Mm -hmm. It gave you a different perspective on what Great you list. saw. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the crew, the the crew is the very very important part of it all. Um, being able to support that swimmer, seeing what the swimmer is going through, you're in a different world when you're in the water. Um, your hearing, your whole senses are completely detached from what is on the water, you know, in that boat. Um, the energy that you've got to have as a crew for that swimmer is mighty. It's colossal. Um, and you do, you do be on 100% drive the whole time, 14 hours, 12 hours, whatever it is. Um, I'll never forget the first guy that I crewed for. Um, the guy from China. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sure. He was amazing and his crew were fantastic and his son was brilliant and it was just brilliant with Milo figuring out does he need warm water, what's his feeds and you had that whole language barrier as well but it didn't matter because whether it was English, Chinese, German, whatever, everybody needs exactly the same attention, exactly the same support and making sure that the safety of the swimmer is paramount. Mm -hmm. So they're being observed all the time and every little breath, oh, he's changed his breathing pattern, his leg kick's gone, his legs are sinking, no they're not, they're fine, he's come back again, did he get stung by a jellyfish, what kind of effect has that had on him? You're constantly monitoring mm -hmm. their health checks, their behaviour, their visuals, the people on the boat, what their nutrition is getting, how much they're taking, and you're thinking, well, four hours ago he was like this, and two hours ago he's like that, and we've got another few currents to go, and the fight that you have, I mean, it is a battle on the boat as well as in the water, because you're looking at the currents and you're trying to understand, you know, where am I going to be able to land? Am I going to be close to this? Are we even going to get that? And the whole jockey on the radios between each boat helping each other out, oh, if you go so it's a wee bit to the right, it's maybe not that, <laughs> like, but a <laughs> wee bit to the right or a wee bit to the left, you'll get more of a pull. And that just is really heartwarming to hear when you're on the boat because you just know that you have to get that person across no matter what happens. So it helped you to look differently at the role for your crew uh, as much as you as the swimmer. Absolutely, yeah. Dee, one of the lovely feedbacks I got from one of your crew members was how you when you always looked up at her, she was smiling. Yeah. And that was very rewarding for her yeah. as a crew member and, and probably very new to open water swimming yeah. uh, to, to have that from you as the swimmer because yeah. obviously you're the most important person yeah. for all of us to, yeah. to, to get you from A to B. Yeah. How have you looked at it differently in terms of the, the role of crew? Your crew, very educated, 
um, maybe somewhat overpowering in terms of the information and the diligence and then you nearly deflecting all of that yeah. because you didn't want to stop, you didn't want to feed when they wanted to feed you. How have you learned from that? Um, yeah, look, I think... It didn't pee. Yeah, I know, it didn't pee. <laughs> We're writing down on the sheet, D didn't, didn't pee. pee. <laughs> that needs to go on the Observer reports, did yeah. you pee? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's more, it's, it's for it all to be a more flexible plan and a more intuitive plan. And the thing is, like, um, I, th I think I was spoiled when I did the English Channel because I had Cliff Golding who has, like, so much experience and will improvise. And it's like Andrea said to me, unless you're a higher rank than me in the army or you have done a bigger ultra, I'm not going to listen. And I'm like, well, it's not really like that, but I know it probably is a bit like that, that... You know, I feel like I know what I know because it's how I've trained. But yeah, it's when you do crew other people, you can kind of. Well, I think first off, like from helping people get their six hours and things like that, it's it can be really inspiring to see how people push through when you think they actually won't. You know, and you're pulling everything out of the bag really for them, and mm -hmm. it's how like for me as a crew, like when I'm helping people with you know those kind of things, like how. Like there's one guy who came over from America to Croatia to do a six hour qualifier and he hadn't done more than two hours in the week that we were there because he was like I'm jet lagged and all the rest of it. The day we were doing six hours, he we got up to four hours and he said to me, it's just knowing the way your mind works and then kind of recognizing it in yourself. But he said to me, is my, is my bag on your boat? And I was like, yeah, it is, but you're not going to need that for another few hours. So I knew he was thinking, right, if I get over the four hours, I'm out. So I got on the radio to the other boat and I was like, you're going to have to do his feed for the next one because yeah. I know he's going to tap out if um, if I do his feed because he knows his bag is there. Very good. And, and it's that kind of stuff, you know. And Very good. Like, I can see that in terms, but then it's, when you when you physically see it as a crew, then you're like, wait a minute, I yeah. do this stuff as well. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Learning the secret sauce. Yeah, you're learning the wee tricks. <laughs> Yes, and it, right. it, it, but it does help you, you know, yeah. as a swimmer, that you can be a bit more like, oh, I'm just playing games here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's a bit of a reality kick, but um, yeah, and definitely like you know, with with Andrea and Claire and that, um, they now haven't seen the North Channel with me. They will. I know they'll be way more open to just being like, no, do you need to do this? This is you know. It was a very diligent plan, and mm. it didn't. It, shouldn't yeah. have been as much yeah. as you said it yeah. to be more flexible yeah. and even when I think about it like I was I was taking extra water on from about four hours because I had taken salpidine and I was like I don't want to be taking that without loads of extra water going in and blah 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 why didn't we just why why did it not cross my mind to say to them if I'm taking that I take it on the half hour do you know instead of sitting there drinking two bottles when you're having more fluid or less fluid could it, yeah, yeah could have yeah. done yeah, you good, know. Learning. good learning yeah but it's, sometimes it takes doing it and that's why like your long six hour swims are really important and it's really good to do or like even you know you're longer than six hours you're training swims and doing your training swims with a boat because with an experienced crew in yeah, a boat exactly yeah do you know because oh, yeah. I, I did the six hours and <coughs> I had friends in the boat and like that yeah. it was like yeah. they had their elevenses with sausage rolls and brown sauce and it was like yeah. you know do you want a wee pancake or anything and I'm like <laughs> What? You know? Yeah. Hello. And then sending messages. Claire yeah. says, Are you okay for later? And I'm going, What do you mean? Uh, what's you know, later? What's yeah. later? You know, so it's um So the type of feedback and the you yeah. really do need, are very centered. Yeah. yeah. It's the people is, yeah. in the game that needs yeah. to be with you. It's but when you're very out, difficult. When you're doing the long swims on the boat, you need to be treating it like it's the North Channel swim. Yeah. That that's where you're testing all the all the feeds and all our theories. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we knew we needed to feed fast but we didn't practice that once you know we whenever we were doing swims together with mm -hmm. the boat we were like it was a chance to regroup and chat and oh how are you getting on because you're over there and how did, am you, I see the sea? did you see the sea <laughs> oh my god the seaweed's gorgeous yeah so you know it wasn't we weren't we were just enjoying it a bit too much I yeah think. yeah you have to enjoy it or that's why well, we well, do it well <laughs> yes it is very much a part of us having fun mm -hmm. yeah I wanted to ask one question because we're asking everyone, um, and I suppose you've went through a lot of it. But mm. uh, before you started this journey, if you had the knowledge you have now, and you wanted to pick one thing each, one thing mm -hmm. that you would tell yourself before you started this journey, that you were about to step over the threshold to start this journey, what would you say to yourself? Um. 
Go for it. I would tell myself to retire and get into a routine of Monday to Friday. <laughs> Swim at the weekends. <laughs> yeah. Just, it was, um, yeah, I would go for it. Yeah. 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 Learn as much as you can from as many experienced swimmers of the North Channel as possible. And yeah, take every opportunity when it comes to you, when it comes in the way of local swims and in the area, what you're doing here makes a big, big difference, I think, as well. You know, going away and doing swim quests and things is all well and good, but I think being here with the people here is very, very important. Yeah. So. Was the North Channel, like, no disrespect in any other, like, it's like, you train for your course, you train mm -hmm. for your mountain, you train for whatever you have to train for, but the North Channel is a different swim from the English Channel. Mm. Well, it like, is. It's your country, and it's your it's mm. your body of water. It's what it's what makes your blood flow, and and the people here. Yeah. That's what surrounds us. This is our part of the world. Yeah. So. But I suppose what I'm saying is, sixty percent of it, of the training that you would do for the English Channel and the North Channel is pretty similar. You know the mm. training, but you do have to modify your feeds. You do have to get used to the cold. You do have to put on some kind of like, yeah. layer. But see, even like you miss the cap on the English Channel, and then you're into a bay, basically. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's just it's a completely different finish to what you're getting in Scotland. You've also just swam into warmer water, so the yeah. water is probably at least a degree warmer on the French side She's than on the English really side. Quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you didn't do it, Chris. Closer to Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no disrespect to it but it's an absolute different beast and it's a different yeah. beast like when you are at your worst on the English Channel you know you're actually because when I felt like I, I was like am I ever going to get there but it was fine because I was like I can see people and I can see a sandy beach and the sun is shining and I know it's not that for everyone I know people no. get dark finishes and all the rest of it but for me it was just completely different whereas when I was coming towards Scotland it was getting dark in my head. I was like, I don't have my lights on. I'm so stupid. Why didn't I put my lights on? Because, you know, like, you've all these thoughts going on. And it just, it was a completely different experience. But yeah, it's, you need more padding and insulation. That's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies, Dean Newell, D from the Sea, Chris Thanks. McLaughlin, thank you so much for no, thank you. your nuggets of knowledge. Very, very important for I'm other honest. people. Very <laughs> relaxed. Very yeah. truthful. Uh, yeah. Emotional scars are still run there, yeah, and uh, living living with them. And and what I, what I like about it is that it, it hasn't beaten you. You know, there's a forward plan. There's a yeah. opportunity to do something yeah. about it and make a difference for yourself. Yeah. And go for it, as you said. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You but to. that is channel swimming, isn't it? You just keep like that's why people do Ocean Seven because you want to do more. So it's like yeah, just keep doing it until we get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> challenge the human challenge. Yeah, we get a team discount because we'd have done it so many times. <laughs> <laughs>